Good evening everyone and welcome to Gundam News. And this week we got two new trailers for upcoming Gundam projects, both of which gave us some really interesting information. There was one for Silver Phantom and one for Requiem for Vengeance. And let's start with the one that we got first, Silver Phantom, which also came with this really cool artwork. And despite being a short trailer, they did their best to show us a lot of mobile suits, which is both exciting and confusing. There is a Zaku 2, a Jagan, the origin version of the Vanilla Gym, a Red Zissa, a Giradoga, something from the Delta family, and the Gun Cannon Heavy. So the obvious question then is, is this going to take place in the origin timeline or is that gym just like a stylistic choice, which I believe is something they also did in UC Engage with one of the uh, cutscenes. Like they didn't elaborate on it, they just used that the origin gym because they could. And then of course, the second surprising thing is that that vanilla gym is still operating in Universal Century 0096. Now, I saw a comment saying that maybe like uh, the scenes with the gym and Zaku 2 were a flashback, but at least for the gym, we see it twice with a Giradoga in the same scene. So that gym is definitely in UC 0096 which then also makes me wonder about that the origin version of the vanilla salamis that we see. Did that thing also somehow survive up to 0096 to then just be destroyed, or is that an actual flashback? Less impressive then are the graphics, especially when you put them side to side with Requiem for Vengeance. Like, I like the art style, but these graphics wouldn't have impressed me even back during the PlayStation 3 days, let alone today. And the mouth movement also really stood out to me. It felt like they had only three frames of animation, creating some very jerky movements. It almost felt like those talking 2D heads that you sometimes get in like RPGs or strategy games to just spice up uh, the text a little bit and to show you who's doing the talking. And I'm also going to address the elephant in the room here. For requiring 3D glasses, I felt like this trailer was able to give me a pretty good experience on my 2D screen. On to the Requiem for Vengeance trailer then, and let's start off with the good stuff. Both the sound design and the visuals of the mobile suits are absolutely top notch. So if nothing else, it's going to be a fun series to just watch and enjoy the action that's on screen. There were some minor hiccups like this grass slash dirt popping in, and the Guns of the Goof custom sounding a bit underwhelming, but in general, the action looks really good. What made me less excited then were the characters. The voice acting is still average at best, and there's just something wrong with the facial movements that places them in the uncanny valley for me. Like, they are so so close to being perfect, but not quite, which is then what places them in that uncanny valley zone. Um, and since we're talking about the characters, we also get introduced to some new ones. We have Halo NPC, JRPG Sidekick, Cyberpunk 2077 OC, and The Mechanic. Another thing that I noticed that made me raise my eyebrow was that in this English version, they say that our main characters, the Red Wolves, took out three fleets at Loom, which is quite the feat considering the Federation didn't even have three fleets at Loom. So I guess they got bored and decided to take out a Zeon fleet while they were at it. 
all kidding aside though, in the Japanese subtitles, it says that they took out three ships, not fleets. And since this sounds way more believable, I'm gonna go on a limb here and say that it's the English version that's wrong. So they definitely could have polished this trailer slash preview thing a bit more, but hey, they did at least end it on a high note with those goof customs dropping in. And we also got some information on the two main machines of the series. Solaris Zaku-2 F-Type and the Gundam X. Not to be confused with the other Gundam X. The Zaku is a commander machine, which is why it has the twin antennas, and it has claws painted on its feet, uh, of course to fit with the name of the squadron, the Red Wolves, which is actually a detail I didn't notice until I read about it. The Gundam then is a state-of-the-art mobile suit developed by the Federation with an emphasis on maneuverability. What sets it apart from the main Gundam then is that it is designed for combat under gravity with its main goal being force reconnaissance and penetrating deep into enemy territory to create chaos behind the front line. The details on this machine though are unfortunately unknown because all of its data was destroyed in the chaos following the one year war. And that is what we got so far. For something potentially really exciting then, on April the 7th, 7 p.m. Japan time, they'll release a Gundam 45th anniversary special video. We don't have any major details yet on what they'll be talking about or more importantly, what they're going to be announcing, but we do know of two things. Some famous Gundam voice actors will be making a guest appearance, being Toru Furia, Omro's voice actor, Tomokazu Seki, Domun's voice actor, and Kana Ichinose, Soleta's voice actress. And they will be revealing new things for G Gundam. What those are going to be, again, that remains to be seen. And personally, I also wouldn't be surprised if they show off a trailer for a new and upcoming Gundam project, be it a completely new anime or Hathaway's Flash 2. Uh, for the Gunpla news then, we have some new which from Mercury things. Pre-orders over at Japanese P Bandai have begun for the Full Mechanics Aerial Permit Score 6, which goes for 4,620 yen, which is around 35 US, and the High Grade Caliborn Permit Score 5, for which I just completely forgot to write down the price, so I'll have that up on screen. The Caliborn just has a different colored shell unit, but the Aerial has a differently colored shell unit and differently colored beams. They're now green instead of blue. The Caliborn is slated for a June release and the Ariel is slated for a July release. But both of them were on pre-sale over at Bandai's Hyper Plamo Fest 2024. So you can get them now if you'd want to through resellers, meaning that you will have to pay quite the premium for them. On the figure front then, we are getting some actual new things. Last week I talked about how the Robot Spirit Slaughter Dagger went up for pre-order, and alongside it, they also announced that they'll be releasing a Robot Spirit Strike Noir version anime. Not to be confused with the older, non-anime version. And more details will be released soon. And what they also announced was the 7th Mobile Suit Mechanical Bust lineup. And this time around it is the Sazabi. For 500 yen a spin, 3 US, you'll be able to get a set of regular armor, a set of clear armor, or the internals with the light up function. And it's not just the mono eye that lights up, the mega particle cannon lights up as well. It is currently up for pre order on Bandai's online Gachapon store, where it is slated for a July release, so expect these to be hitting physical Gachapon machines in Japan at around that time as well. And of course, what would a week be without some Gundam Seed Freedom news? The movie has already entered its 10th week and they're still giving out freebies to moviegoers. 
there is a new illustration cart drawn by Hisashi Hirai, and they're redistributing the Escape for Two short story, but now with a new cover art. And talking about new art, they also gave us this new key visual image, drawn by Satoshi Shigeta. And especially the Mighty Strike Freedom has caught the attention of some fans because of the placement of the beam cannon. Now, to use human terms here, um, the beam cannon on the torso should actually be like where the belly button is, but now it's on the chest instead. For those who want to watch the movie a bit more lively then, in Japan, between March 28th and April the 4th, they're holding special screenings where you're not just allowed to like cheer at the screen and yell about what's going on, it is actually encouraged to do it. Like, they're even telling you that you can bring your own pen light so you can cheer as if it's some kind of idol concert. Um, this is the first time that I've heard about an event like this, um, but I think it's definitely a cool idea for an action movie, especially if you've already seen it once, or five times, like one of my friends. Um, I'll have the information for these screenings down below if you're in Japan and you want to try to check them out. And if you want to yell even more in Gundam Approved style, then you'll be happy to hear that Freedom's collaboration with the Joy Sound karaoke locations has been extended until May the 6th. And I'll also have that information linked down below. Meanwhile, on the gaming front, in Gundam Battle Operation 2 for the PlayStation, the new Gundam HWS has joined the fray. In the global version of UCN Gage, we've got a clan battle event. The UR, the O, and UR Papama Shirako have become available as unit assemblies. And they also announced that the unit assemblies will be getting some improvements. And on the Japanese UCN Gage, then, Players can go for the extremely, extremely limited UR New Gundam, HWS, and UR Omro Ray. And new episodes were released in the Char and Omro mode. And in other news, six new illustrations were posted on the SD Gundam World Heroes Kita Hagane Monogatari website, link down below. The life-sized moving Gundam over at the Gundam Factory Yokohama has unfortunately entered its last week, with the grand finale being held on Sunday. And so far, nothing has been announced to replace it, although I highly doubt that nothing is going to replace it. And there was this really nice illustration to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Advance of Zeta. Uh, but before you feel too old, it actually only turns 22 this year. So either the author made a mistake, um, he rounded it up to 25 because like a quarter of a century sounds nicer, or what I think might be the most likely explanation is that 25 years ago is like when he first started playing with the ideas for the story or the mobile suits that would eventually become the basis for Advance of Zeta. As for the things you could get this week then, on the 23rd we got one action figure and three new Gumpla kits. For 8,800 yen, which is around 60-70 US, there was the Robot Spirit Cytomess Gym Command Guinea Pig Custom, a recolor of the colony type with the space type color scheme, which comes with both the bullpup machine gun and the beam gun, and it also comes with a new shield and some cool effect parts. For 3,190 and then 21 US, there was the high-grade Galguk Menace Lunamaria Custom, which comes with the Atmospheric Backpack, Railgun, Beam Rifle, Twin Beam Naginata, and the Beam Shield, which uses polarized molding for an extra cool effect. For 2,970 and 20 US, there was the high-grade Rudra Griffin Custom, which comes with a Beam Rifle, an impressive Beam Sword, and a somewhat less impressive Beam Cape. And then for 4,180 and 28 US, you could get the figureized standard Avatar Fumina, who comes with a small beam rifle, two Gatling Smashers, extra fuel tanks, a bunch of expressions, extra hair parts to make it resemble the standard Fumina, 
and the ability to purge all of her armor. And then if you need something to listen to while you're building all of that Gunpla, then Gundam had you covered on the 27th. The second volume of the Astacasia Radio Committee was released for 4,400 yen, 29 US, and it contains one CD with episodes 18 through 34, and another CD with brand new material. Then the G Gundam Blu-ray box that was re-released, and from Gundam Seat we got a book featuring 17 piano scores for their most popular songs. And at only 1,760 yen, 12 US, it makes for the perfect gift for the nickel in your life. For this week's reading material then, there was the 19th volume of Hobby Japan Mechanics, this time featuring on the original Advance of Zeta, featuring things like the Hazels, the Rosette, the Gaplin TR5, the Hazen's Lee Raw 2, etc, etc. Then we got the big comic superior, in which Gundam Thunderbolt is being serialized, Shonen Sunday Super, in which Gundam Aggressor is being serialized, the May issue of Gundam Ace, in which a variety of series are being serialized, and it also comes with a B3 poster for Gundam Seed Freedom. There was the May issue of Model Graphics, featuring the High Great Immortal Justice and High Great Lefrith Anavata. The May issue of Hobby Japan, featuring a special on the Sunrise Robots of the 80s. Hobby Japan published the second Easy Gumpla Building Guide, which is designed to like give you easy tips and tricks to make a big impact on your Gumpla building skills. This is the Gundam Historia book art book, which is all about the Sengokuden SDs and is available for 2,970 yen, 20 US. And we also got some manga and novel volumes. There was the second and final part of the Gundam Seed Freedom novelization, volume 11 of Gundam F90 Fastest Formula, volume 2 of Gundam Werewolf Valpurgis Eve and Gundam the Red Giant 3rd MS Team, a new edition of Kazuhisa Kondo's manga called Gundam 0079 Episode Luna 2, and volume 5 of Around 30 Office Worker Hamansama, with a cover that people who have me on the second screen will not want to miss. See? I told you. On to the apparel news then, where Strict G kicked things off on the 22nd with another Alpha Industries collaboration for some Gundam inspired jackets. For 44,000 yen, 290 US, you can get an Earth Federation Space Forces inspired Alpha Light MA1 jacket with some very cool markings on it. And if you look closely, you'll notice that the color isn't just blue, it's blue blur camo, making it a bit more special. Or for $3 more, you can get the same jacket, but now styled after the undefeated of the East, Master Asia. And for that extra three bucks, you get writing on the inside and an extra tag on the left shoulder zipper. On the Federation jacket, there's only two, being Alpha Industries and the Earth Federation Space Forces, but on Master Asia's jacket, we're getting three. Being Alpha Industries, Master Asia, and the Undefeated of the East. On April the 6th, they'll become available in physical Strig G stores. Next up on the American front, Gundam had a collaboration with Hypland. For 180 US, there's an RX-78-2 rug. For 60 US, a Haro, Sharzaku, or RX-78-2 fitted hat. For 70 US, a Gundam, Zaku, or Goof skate deck. For 50 US, an orange or black Federation puffer bag. For 258 US, an RX-78-2 or red Comet puffer jacket. For 130 US, a twill jacket. For 125 US, a pair of twill pants or Gundam flight panel pants. For 90 US, a sweater featuring the Mark II, or a hoodie with the Federation Star RX-78-2, Sharzaku-2, Gun Cannon, or this cool design. And then for 42 US, you could get a t-shirt with a variety of RX-78-2s, Sharzaku-2s, or the Goof. And then finally, there was Bankore. On the 25th, pre-orders went live for the second lineup of OG Gundam mobile suit illustration items. The mobile suits this time around are the Gun Cannon, Gun Tank, Charles and the Goof. 
and you can get him on a t-shirt for 4,400 yen, 29 US, a face towel for 2,200 yen, 15 US, or a keychain for 880 yen, 6 US. And then on the second, pre-orders went up for two Gundam Seed inspired folding umbrellas. There's design A with uh, Cherry Blossoms, Haro and Tori, and design B, which is mostly like spacey, with the Freedom, Justice and Tori appearing once. What I'm not quite 100% sure about though, is why they're calling these things OC umbrellas. Like I tried googling it, and I only came up with two results. Someone's OC holding an umbrella, and literally these umbrellas. Um, so I guess they're OC umbrellas because they have some like of the original Gundam Seed characters on them, but by that definition you could just call all of the merchandise OC plus whatever the thing is. OC shirts. But anyways, um, as always, let's quickly wrap things up with the polls. With the re-release of the G Gundam Blu-ray box, Gundam.info wanted to know what G Gundam's most impressive special move was. Or when looking at the move selection, maybe it is more accurate to say what Domon's most impressive move was. Uh, with 14.3% there was the Erupting Shuffle Alliance attack, with 19.6% the Vanilla Sekiha Tenkyoken, with 21.5% the Sekiha Tenkyo God Finger, and then the real whopper was the Sekiha Love Love Tenkyoken with 44.6%. Never underestimate the Burger King. As for the currently ongoing poll then, with so many new Gumpla announcements last week, Gundam.info wanted to know which one we're the most excited for. The high grade Gundam Amazing Barb Sloops, the SD Gundam Cross Silhouette Mighty Strike Freedom, Figure Eye Standard Luna Maria Hawk, or real great RX-78 2 Gundam version 2.0. And this order is also their current standing, with the Twitter and Gundam.info versions of the poll being in complete agreement with each other. The Amazing Barb's Loops is not doing quite so amazing. Um, on Twitter it is still holding up somewhat well, but on Gundam.info almost nobody cares about it. Like you can barely see the bar on my image. Heck, if you're watching this on your phone, you probably can't even see the bar because it's so small. The RX-78 II on the other hand is in a very comfortable lead, and then for Luna Maria and the SD Mighty Strike Freedom, it depends on where you look. On Gundam.info, they are roughly equal, but on Twitter, Luna Maria does pull way ahead. So it's safe to say that this poll has been decided already. But if you want to cast your vote, I will of course have the links down below. And that has been all for this week's Gundam News. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters, I hope everyone watching has a great evening, and I'll see you all next week with more Gundam news.